Hey, welcome back to another walkthrough. For this walkthrough, we're looking at 7G Loan Staff Revenue. Let's begin. First, let's download our materials. Remember, do not download all files. Download each individual file. And go ahead and open up your Excel file and hit enable editing. All right, to start off for step number two, we want to display the second work worksheet, warehouse, warehouse payment table. And we want to create a data table that's going to give us a number of payments and how much those payments are at a different interest rate. To insert our PMT function, let's go ahead and click on cell B8. And let's go up to our FX button and let's search for the PMT function and hit go. And here it is, very first one, PMT, hit OK. So first we need to put in the rate, which is going to be B4. But we need to divide that, so make sure you use the forward slash the divide key by 12 in order to make it a monthly interest rate. The number of payments is going to be B3, 120. So click on B3. And then the present value of our loan is going to be in B2. But in B2, we need to put the minus sign in front of the B2 to make it a positive number. Once you have those in, hit OK. And we should get a number a little over $10,000. So now we want to look at different scenarios to find the best interest rate uh, for the amount of time that we are looking to make payments for. We're looking for a specific payment. So to do this, we're going to highlight all the way down from B8 to H17. We're going to go to the data tab. Under the data tab, we're going to do a what if analysis under forecast. And we're going to do a data table. Our input cell row is going to be B3. Our column input row is going to be B4. And go ahead and hit OK. And notice what that does is it fills in all of our uh, scenarios, all of our numbers here. Let's go ahead and change some of these uh, formatting. So we're going to highlight C9 all the way down to H16. We want to do the currency cell style under styles. So we're going to go to the home tab. Under our styles grouping here, we're going to click the down arrow with the line above it, and we are going to select currency. Now that we've got a better look, we want to select the payment that is closest to $10,000 a month, but does not go over. So it looks like we want 120 payments at a 4% interest rate. Let's go ahead and make this a note cell style. So D16, we're gonna make a note cell style. We're gonna come up here to our styles and note, because that is what we are looking for. That's the payment that we want. Let's go ahead and click on cell A1 to deselect everything and save our work. So now we wanna to go to the fourth worksheet, which is job information. We want to select range A4 to C11. And we want to sort by job code. So I'm going to come up here to my home tab under sort and filter. And I'm going to do a custom sort. And I want to sort by job code from A to Z and hit OK. So to create a named range, we're going to highlight A5 down to A11. And right here under A5, our name box, let's go ahead and click in there and let's type in capital J O B. Make sure you put the underscore and type in capital C and then regular O D E. So job code, job underscore code and hit enter to make that name stick. So now that we've created our named range, let's go ahead and select cell A1 and let's move to the staffing plan worksheet. 
So now we are going to look use the VLOOKUP function to create a table that we can look up values. To do that, we're going to first thing we're going to do is uh, do some data validation. So let's click in cell A9. Let's go to our data tab. Under data tab, we're going to go to data validation under data tools and click on data validation. We want to make a list and we're going to do equals and we're going to type in job capital J O or capital J lowercase O B underscore O. Okay, make sure you capitalize the C and hit OK. And let's copy that formula down. So let's hover over that dot in the right hand corner of our cell, hit that black cross, click hold, and let's drag it all the way down to A18. So now it wants us to select M-MG. So we're going to select M-MG. Let's click on description right here on B9 and we're going to insert our lookup V lookup function. So we're going to click on the FX button up here. Let's type in V lookup. Hit enter. There it is. There's our V lookup. Hit OK. So our lookup value is going to be A9 because we want to look up that value. Our table array, we want to be very careful. We want to click. Make sure you click on table array. We're going to click on the job information worksheet. We're going to highlight A4 all the way down to C11. We want to make this an absolute cell reference. So hit your F4 key up at the top of your keyboard. If you have a Mac, use the command T, or you can go ahead and just type in the dollar sign before and after the A and the dollar sign before and after the C. We are looking for description. So for our column index, we want to do the second column. So we want to do column index of two. So let's click on column index and hit two and hit okay. So it looked up that this code is a manager. Let's go ahead and put in our number of positions, which is going to be one. Our type is going to be management. And for salary, we're going to do another V lookup. So let's go ahead and click on the FX button again. V lookup, hit OK. Same value, we're going to look up A9. For our table array, we're going to go back to our job information. We're going to highlight A4 to C11. Remember again to hit that F4 key to make it an absolute cell reference or Command T for max. Or once again, put the dollar signs before and after the A and C. And this time we're looking up salary, so that is the third column. So we are going to put for the column index 3 and hit OK and it should bring over what the salary is. We need to copy those VLOOKUP functions down. So right here on the dot in the bottom right hand corner of E9, get that black cross, click hold, drag it down to E18. And let's do the same thing for description. Click on B9, hover over that dot, click hold and drag it down to B18, let go. And now we've set up our sheet, we can start putting in the rest of our information. So in cell A10, let's click the down arrow. Let's select C cash. Number of positions is going to be three. It is a cashier position. For A11, we want to select CCSA. We have one position. It is customer service. Under A12, we want to do M dash AMG. Number of positions is three. And the type is managing. So there, we've typed in all of our information. We use the VLOOKUP function to pull out our information from that other table. 
we want to delete unused uh, rows. So let's go ahead and hover over the 13. Let's get that black arrow pointing to the right. Click, hold, and drag all the way down to 18. Then right click on the 13 and hit delete. And that will delete all of our unused rows. We want, also want to sum our budget amount. So let's go ahead and click on cell F13. Go to the home tab, click on auto sum under editing. It should put the formula in for us with the proper data. Go ahead and hit enter. And lastly, we want to change this uh, F13 to a total, uh, total cell style on the home tab under our styles group, hit the down arrow with the line above it and select total. Let's go ahead and put our cursor up on cell A1. Let's hit the save button. Now for step 11, we wanna to go to our bracelet revenue and we wanna find all of the errors that we have. So in cell I5, notice we have an error. It has the little triangle up in the corner, but we don't know what that error is. We wanna trace where these numbers are coming from. So let's go to our formulas tab. And from our formulas tab, we're gonna trace precedence. And notice that it's taking the beaded bracelet and projecting it against crystal bracelets which is not what we're looking for. We wanna make sure it's projected against the beaded bracelets at 25%. So we need to come up here and change B14 to B15. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change this four to a five. Go ahead and hit enter. It's gonna update all of our values for us. Now we wanna click on cell M6 and come up to our formula auditing. We're gonna click on error checking and in cell N6, it's telling us that we have an error. And what it's doing is notice that it's dividing by L10 when there is no value in L10. So we need to change this. We're gonna edit in the formula bar. And we're gonna change this 10 to a nine. Hit resume. Now it's taking us to F7. It wants us to copy the formula from above. It notices that we have the wrong formula, so we're gonna copy from above. And now it takes us to our last error, and it wants us to copy the formula from the left. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And we're done, hit OK. So we've now fixed all of our errors on here. The only thing we need to do is change our formatting here. So let's go ahead and click on cell M5, which has the percent format. We'll click on the Home tab our format painter and go ahead and click on cell M6 and notice that we'll copy the format from M6 to our M5 to M6. Now for step number 14, we want to click on the designers tab here and we're going to put in a match function. So let's go ahead and click on B2 and we want to match where our sports bracelets are. So we're going to click on our FX button here. We're going to type in match and hit go. And there it is. There's match. Hit OK. Our lookup value is going to be B1 because that's what we're looking up. Our lookup array is going to be C6 all the way down to C27. And our match type is going to be zero and go ahead and hit okay so now we can know that sports bracelets is in the eighth row and if we come down here and we count the eighth row is where sports bracelets are located so we are actually going to use this formula in our next formula so go ahead and come up to our formula bar here. Go ahead and highlight everything except for the equal sign. Go ahead and highlight match uh, all the way over to the close parentheses. Do not get that uh, equal sign. And let's go ahead and copy that. I'm just going to right click and hit copy. So we copied that formula. So now that we've copied this, go ahead and hit the escape key. 
And the reason why you want to hit the escape key is because we don't want to change this formula by accident. So it takes us out of uh, editing mode. And now we can go ahead and click on cell B3. From here, we want to use the index and a match function uh, to find the name of the designer for sports bracelets. So to do that, we're going to click on the FX button here. We're going to type in index, hit go. There it is, index, we're going to hit OK. We're going to select this first option here, hit OK. So our array is going to be A6 all the way down to A27. Our row number is going to be that formula that we copied, that match formula. So go ahead and right click and hit paste. And it's going to put that formula in for us. And that's it, we're good. We can go ahead and hit okay. And it should bring back the designer for the sports bracelet. Now for step number 15, let's go ahead and click on cell A1 to deselect everything. Let's right click on designer tab, hit select all sheets. Let's go to our page layout tab under our page setup. Let's click on our page setup dialog box, this little guy right here. Let's click on the margins tab. We're going to center on page horizontally. Click on the header footer, custom footer in the left section. We want our file name. In the right section, we want to put our sheet name. Go ahead and hit OK, hit OK. Right click on designers and hit ungroup sheets. We're going to go to our warehouse payment table. We're going to change the orientation to landscape. And under scale to fit right here under page layout, we're going to change it to 95%. Just hit the down arrow once under scale. And then let's go ahead and click on the designers worksheet. And let's go ahead and change that orientation to landscape as well. Let's go ahead and put in our file properties. Let's hit the file tab here. Let's go to the info group, show all properties. Under tags, we're going to go ahead and do staffing plan, all lowercase, comma space, brace, bracelet revenue. Under subject, type in CGS. And under author, go ahead and type in your name. And go ahead and hit the save button. Go ahead and hit file print. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Looks good. We have our file name. We have our sheet name. Save it again for good measure. And let's go ahead and turn it in. Go ahead and minimize this. Exit out of my downloading materials. Choose file. Here it is, loan staff revenue, hit open, upload, and submit for grading. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, go back to our list of assignments. This is 7G loan staff. I'm going to click on the three dots and hit view submission. And it looks like I got a 99.5%. That was so close. I'm going to click on my submissions to see what I did wrong. And I'm going to scroll down and it looks like I made a, a minor mistake here in uh, step 15. I'll hit the down arrow. I might have done the wrong sheet and changed it to landscape and I changed the wrong sheet to 95%. Oh well, I'm happy with a 99.5%. If you made the same mistake and you want to get 100, feel free to go back and fix it. But that concludes this walkthrough. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, and like always, have a wonderful day.